Hi, my name's Alana. I'm the species at risk biologist at Magnetowan First Nation. I work in the Department of Lands and Resources, but today I'm in my workshop because we have partnered with the Georgia Bay Biosphere Reserve to bring you a little video on how to make your own turtle nest protector. But first, I want to go into a little bit more detail about why nest protectors are such a great conservation tool for turtles. All of Ontario's eight turtle species are listed as species at risk. This is a result of many factors, including nest predation, as well as habitat destruction, discriminate killing, and road mortality. These threats are magnified by the fact that turtles are extremely long-lived species, which means it takes a long time for them to reach an age when they can reproduce, which is roughly at the age of 20. The chances of making it to that age and surviving adulthood is extremely low, even in a balanced ecosystem. To put it into numbers, nest predation rates can be as high as 100% in some areas where predators, like raccoons and foxes, are more prevalent. But even if the nest is not predated and the eggs develop properly if necessary temperature and moisture conditions are maintained in the nest, there is an approximately 6% chance of a single hatchling from that clutch surviving its first year of life. If it survives the first year, there is a less than 1% chance that it will reach an age when it can reproduce. So, when high nest predation rates are considered, the chances that a single turtle egg will reach adulthood is much, much, much less than 1%. Based on research from the Algonquin Wildlife Research Station on snapping turtles, it can take up to 1,400 eggs for the chance that one of them will reach maturity and thus replace their mother in the population. In general, populations of turtles can withstand some level of nest predation. But in areas where nests are more easily accessible to predators, or in areas where there is unsustainably high predation rates, nest protection or other recovery strategies may be warranted. Turtles also show a high fidelity to their nesting sites, meaning they will come back year after year to the same spot to lay eggs. So, if you have noticed turtles nesting on your property, or have seen a nest that was dug up, consider installing a nest protector to give the next generation of turtles a chance of surviving. Let me show you how to build one. I'm going to be showing you how to make a nest protector based on the Canadian Wildlife Federation guidelines. They recommend that the nest protector be 2x2 two two feet, which is the size of the ones I have here. You can make them a little bit smaller depending on how much material you have. You'll also notice that there are holes cut on all four sides of the frame. This is very important because the nest protector needs to remain on top of the nest for the entire incubation period. Predators might try and dig up the nest at any time, not necessarily right after the eggs are laid. And you may not be around when the turtles start hatching and emerging, so you want to make sure that they are able to leave the nest instead of getting stuck and possibly overheating if it's a really sunny day. So the first step is you want to make sure you have the proper safety gear. I've got these safety glasses to protect my eyes from sawdust. I've also got these gloves to prevent splinters. And I'm wearing closed-toed shoes to protect my feet. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some of the tools you're going to need to build your own nest protector. Today, I'm gonna to be using my miter saw. If you don't have one of these, you can use a hand saw. I've also got a jigsaw to cut the holes for the hatchlings, but if you don't have one of these, you can also use the hand saw. You're gonna need some wire cutters, a measuring tape, a drill, and if you don't have a drill, you can use a screwdriver. You're also going to need some three inch wood screws and a staple gun with some staples. Lastly, you're going to need to find some wood to build your nest protector. So you need to get your hands on a piece of two by four by eight that you're going to cut into four sections that are two feet long. You're also going to need to find some hardware mesh. It's important that you find the hardware mesh that has a size no bigger than a quarter inch, as you can see there. This is because predators might try and stick their hands in and if they do, they can get stuck and possibly injure themselves. Okay, now that I have all of my tools and materials assembled, it's time to get building.
This next part is an extra step, but I prefer to drill the holes for the screws beforehand just to prevent the wood from splitting. So I'm going to be drilling two holes on either end of two pieces of 2x4, but I'm not going to on these ones. So now I'm going to attach the 2x4 that I just drilled the holes into to the other section of 2x4. Alright, so I just finished assembling the frame as you can see here. So I'm now going to be cutting the holes for the hatchlings to exit on each side of the frame. I'm also going to be cutting them no bigger than around 2 inches. This is to prevent predators from being able to stick their hand in and possibly dig the nest, but it's more than enough room to allow the hatchlings to exit. Alright, the frame is done. As you can see, I've cut holes on all sides for the hatchlings. Now I'm going to cut the wire mesh to fit on top. When you're measuring and cutting the mesh, it's important that you leave enough of a lip that you can attach it to the frame, but you don't want to leave too much that it's overhanging and you certainly don't want to leave it so that there are holes. cut to an appropriate size, I'm going to attach it to the frame using a staple gun. Alright, so I just finished attaching the wire mesh to the top of the frame as you can see here. I didn't go too crazy with the staples, you just want to make sure that there aren't any holes for predators to stick their hands through. And uh, yeah, that is basically how you make your own turtle nest protector. I'm going to go outside and show you guys how to install it. Welcome to my backyard where I'm going to show you how to install your nest protector. Unfortunately, my backyard is not very suitable turtle nesting habitat. So let's pretend this tennis ball marks the spot where the turtle laid her eggs. You want to place the nest protector directly over top the center of the nest. If you are too far over, you may be covering where the hatchlings will emerge. You also want to make sure that the exit holes are clear of any debris. To secure it to the ground, you can use garden spikes and hammer them through the top of the cage into the ground on all four corners. Or you can use two or three small rocks instead. It is important that these rocks are not placed over the center of the nest protector or take up too much space on top. This is because turtle nests need lots of sun to incubate the eggs and if placed in properly, the rocks will shade the nest and prevent the ground from warming to optimal temperatures. It is important that you leave the nest protector on for the entire incubation period. Along eastern Georgian Bay, the turtles will start emerging late in the summer. Some hatchlings, like the painted turtle and northern map turtle, may not emerge at all until the following year. It is also worth noting that sometimes a nest just won't hatch at all. This could be for a number of reasons, including that the eggs may not have been fertilized, they did not develop properly, or the weather conditions that particular season did not result in optimal incubation temperatures. But that doesn't mean you should lose hope. Like I said, turtles come back each year to the same spot to nest, so it's always good to have one of these nest protectors handy. 
thank you all for watching. I hope you will enjoy making and using your very own turtle nest protector.